Well, it wasn't easy, but it was definitely worth it. Welcome to Finding America. It's really nice to see you here. Well, the past couple of weeks have been tough with the crazy hot weather and trying to dig in that concrete-like ground. Well, I did not give up and I kept at it. And as it turned out, the perseverance paid off with some pretty cool finds and I uncovered some pretty amazing history as well. Well, it's definitely great to be back and I really hope you enjoy watching this one. Ah, I tell you what, it is so hot. It's unbelievable. But I'm in a little bit of a shady area between uh, this house and a 1930s house. This house looks a bit older. I could say it might go back to early 1900s. I'm hoping. And uh, I'm also hoping I may get permission to this one as well. But right now I'm across this little drive and uh, got a nice little high tone signal here. And uh, I dug down and this popped out. Check this out. Now I thought it was a clad quarter at first. When it came out it was on its side, but I don't think so. This is a this is a weird coin. I think it's 1986 and I I think it's Irish. How about that? Yeah, it sure is. 1980, 1986. That is a coin from Ireland. With the harp. Let me get you in on this. How cool is that? Ah, don't find that very often in Tennessee. So last week I got a British penny and uh, this week I get a two pence piece from Ireland. Beautiful. Can't wait to get it cleaned up. Give it to you a better look at it, but hey, that's not too bad. First hole. Well, I don't know how long I'm going to last in this heat today, but uh, I'm going to give a mile. And my first few finds are kind of giving me a little motivation. Got the Irish coin. I came down, oh, I don't know, about 15 feet and got a nice 70 signal. And I've got a nice older weedy. Yep, this one's going to be a 1939 Philadelphia Mint. That's awesome. That's what I was hoping to see here. And, uh, yeah, hopefully there's some more interesting things hiding. Well, this one was giving me a 36 and it was on edge, uh, but I really don't know what it is. It seems to have been purposely cut into that shape. So, yeah, not really sure, but thought it was interesting. Just thought I'd show it to you. Well, uh, just for those of you wondering, I'm using the Manicore with the M9 coil, and I'm hunting in the All-Terrain Fast program, and just normal tones here. Uh, it's a place I haven't hunted. I usually switch to uh, uh, depth when I've hunted a place for quite a while. So I just wanted to hear some high tones and the mid tones and everything today, so that's what I'm hunting in, and this one gave me a 62. And it wasn't very far down, it was in the plug. And it's an old GM car key. It's an aftermarket replacement. It says, uh, it actually says on it, four GM cars. Sounds pretty cool. Hadn't seen that before, but uh, you're gonna be looking at 70s, 80s. And uh, yeah, good sign. There's signals and there's a uh, target still on the ground here. So I'm gonna keep on going. Now this next signal was giving me a 78, 79. I was hoping for a silver dime, but when I flipped the plug open, I realized it was a, it was definitely a little bit bigger target than that. 
Uh, and when I pulled it out, it was all crumpled up. I straightened it up. And uh, it's kind of cool. It says uh, Penetro Inhaler. So, and it put out by the Penetro Company. So that'll give me something to look up when I get home. Uh, definitely an older piece. Maybe 40s, 30s, somewhere in there. But pretty cool. I'll look it up and see if I can get more information on it. Well, I thought I'd give you an idea of where I'm hunting. Uh, these are all GI Bill houses. Some older ones mixed in. I have permission to that one, that one. I've hunted that one in the past. I'm hoping to get permission to that one. And I have permission to this one, that one, and that one. And then I have a huge empty field here that I'm hunting in right now. And I have permission to these two, so. Ah, uh, but this one was giving me a 47.48. I dug the plug and uh, I can see it right away. I don't know what it is. I thought it was kind of a utensil or something, but I don't know. I figured, pull it out, find out together. And, well, heck, what is that thing? That is odd. Oh, it's part to, yeah, this is part to an old uh, car emblem. I can figure out what it was. Huh, I think it might be a Fairlane 500. I think that was an E and then a 5. Yeah, I think so. Fairlane 500, so 60s into the early 70s. Very cool. Well. Oh, I tell you, this heat is kicking my rear. Whew. I knew I wasn't going to last long today. I got a bit of a later start, and it was already close to 90 when I got started. So I've gone about two hours. I was heading back to the vehicle, and uh, I got a 62 here. It said it was down the hole further, so I dug down about six inches. And I really like this. I mean, it's just a goofy little piece, but if you remember uh, last week, that episode, I found a aluminum spoon to a kitchen set. And this time, I found an aluminum butter knife. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That is really unusual. I have never dug one of those before. And who knows, it might have a pattern on it or something, but I'll find out when I get home, get it cleaned up. But that's very cool. Never found one of those before. And uh, yeah, by the way, the, it's going to be 1950s, 1960s. Well, yesterday it got so crazy hot, I had to quit. It was just impossible. I got two hours in. And with 101 heat index, I was done. So, I'm back out here early in the morning to pick up where I left off. And uh, got a nice little signal here after digging a few pieces of garbage. This one was giving me 80-81. And I gave it a little pop once I flipped the plug over. And, uh, hey, cool little toy car. Looks like an old hot rod. So, very cool. I will definitely take that. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I can get four or five hours before the heat just runs me back home again. So this next one, give me a nice high tone. And, oh, the ground's so hard. I was just chipping away at it. Got down to about seven inches. And there's all kinds of ants in here, but I thought I felt something pop and I reached in and I s started to raise it up and check this out look at that how awesome it's some type of old tin hoping that it has something on it 
It's got something in it. Very cool. I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me get this brushed off. We'll see what it is. Yeah, you can see the little hinge right there. Oh, this is cool. All right, I'll be right back and uh, we'll see what I found. Well, this is a pretty cool little piece right here. Very old. And it cleaned up really nicely. Really no design on it. Except it does have this kind of very cool beaded edge. And you can hear that. There's something inside it, but right here on the front, hopefully I can get you in on it. It says Myro Dana. M I R O dash D E N A. Very sorry, had a bee trying to land on me. I had to shoo it away. Uh, that is weird. I've never heard of it. And believe it or not, I was able to open it rather easily. Look at this. That is like amazing. I don't want to open it too much. It'll break the hinge. But what was rattling inside is what it usually is the uh, broken mirror. So some type of a cosmetic, maybe rouge with a, a mirror in one side. But isn't that awesome? Just perfectly preserved and barely took any effort to pop it open. So that doesn't happen very often. And uh, that is a great, great find. Well, it turns out Mira Dana, the company, has a pretty interesting history. And the company was first founded in the early 1900s by a manicurist named Mary. Well, we're pretty sure her name was Mary. It seems that Mary kept a pretty low profile in her private life. And she was apt to change her name whenever the circumstances warranted. Well, during the late 1800s, cosmetics, especially those that originated from France, were extremely popular and extremely profitable. And Mary decided she was going to start a cosmetic company. Well, the first thing she did was change her name to Marona, which she felt was much more French than Mary. And she went as far to claim that all of her products were made in France. Well, Maradena was actually based in Syracuse, New York. And all of its products were made by a company in New Haven, Connecticut, a company that had no problem affixing special labels to the products it makes for its clients. Well, it didn't take very long when people started to question whether the products were really from France. So in 1904, she went as far as to invite an impartial and well-known French chemist, Madame de Sabosson. And she invited her to go all over New York State and New England to department stores and even auditoriums talking about the wonderful products that Meridina made. Well, she did really well and the people loved her, but Madame Sabreson was keeping a very dark secret. She was actually Marona. Well, despite the shady claims to France, the products were actually quite good. So people didn't complain too much, and she ended up amassing a great fortune and living a very grand life. Well, ironically, Marona, who had built her company using deceit, was eventually undone by someone else's use of deceit. In 1955, at the age of 88, Marona passed away, and her good doctor, teamed up with an unscrupulous lawyer to forge a new will that left him her entire fortune. Well, live a clean life, because what goes around always comes around. Yeah, I decided uh, this morning I was going to concentrate in between the uh, early 1900s home and the 1930 home. And, uh, yeah first good target in this area I'm really gonna pound this area uh, 44 signal and I flip the plug and look at there complete harmonica reed in two pieces but pretty cool harmonica reed plate so that is a great sign and uh, uh, let's see only three inches down 
Can't beat that. Got a slamming 69 signal inch down, and uh, it's going to be a nice old weedy. This one's going to be a 1940 from the Denver Mint. This this one consistently gave me a low 60s number. I kept clearing out a bunch of nails and having to widen the hole because there were more targets in it. I finally found what was giving me a signal about seven, eight inches down. And it was this, I don't even know what it is. Nothing really worth filming. So why am I filming it? Well, I got a nice little bonus find. When I widened the hole and then flipped that plug up, I got a nice little surprise. Check that out. That's gonna be a 30s, 40s pharmacy medicine bottle. Yep nice green one love these things yeah you find them in brown and green I especially like the green ones they look really good in a shadow box or somewhere once they're cleaned up but yeah definitely happy with that and uh, at least I got something out of that hole Ah, oh, this ground just seems to get harder and harder. Or I'm just getting more tired. I don't know. <laughs> I'm having to just chip chunks out of the hole to get down to this. Uh, it was giving me a 65. And I haven't cleaned it off yet, but I am guessing it's a old snowman cookie cutter. I think the handle's pushed down, but it seems to be in the shape of a snowman. I'll get it cleaned up and... Uh, it's pretty old though, it was about seven inches down, entombed in concrete. Ugh. Well, I had definitely had enough of that hot weather and that rock hard ground. So I decided I was gonna head down to the river and hopes that maybe the temperatures might be a little bit cooler there. Well, when I got there, I found out they weren't. <laughs> and the ground wasn't much softer, but I did end up finding some really interesting finds while I was down there. Well, this one was giving me a 51 signal on the VDI. And uh, yeah, I didn't have to go too far down. Now you kind of see why it did. It's a, it looks like a button, but I, I believe it's a, looks like a iron back. And uh, let's go ahead and pull it and see what it is. Oh, cool. It does have a design on it. Very cool. Looks like an older blazer button. Get you in on it here. Very cool. I definitely like that. Ah, not too bad. Very happy with that. Well, this one was a mid to upper 30 signal. Uh, I've been doing a lot of garbage, so I wasn't expecting much from it. And uh, yeah, that's why you keep digging it because every once in a while you get a nice little surprise. Now, I'm not sure exactly what I have other than it's a fired bullet and a pistol bullet, but it has a nice, really nice white patina on it. And I don't see any vertical crimping lines where they would have crimped a cartridge onto it like the later 1800s early 1900s style solid base i i just i'm not sure i'm gonna have to look into this one it could just be late 1800s or you know we have found uh i should say i found uh, quite a few civil war relics mixed in uh so you just you never know i'm just gonna do a little bit of research on this one A nice deep target give me a 25 and to widen the hole a little bit because I thought I saw a spoon bowl and that appears to be what I've got 
Now, I don't know if it's a regular spoon or if this is a, I don't know if it's broken or if it's a sugar spoon. Uh, I guess I don't have it lo loose just yet. Ooh, it's a hot one. Let's see. There we go. I think I got it broken loose now. Boy, if I don't have this broken loose, that means this is like a, a Sunday spoon. Oh yeah, definitely is. That's pretty cool. That's an old Sunday or ice iced teaspoon. Very cool. That was down there pretty good. That's ah, got a nice little pattern. Let's see if I can get you in on this. Yep, there it is. Very cool. I would definitely say 30s. Possibly a little older. Don't know if it's going to have a back mark on it or not, but that is a nice old piece. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm happy with that. Well, I'm going really low and slow in this area. There's just tons and tons of junk signals. And uh, got a nice one here after digging a lot of junk. <laughs> uh, it's giving me like an 8081 once I isolated it. And uh, yeah, I got it. And at first I thought it was sort of a bent nail. You can see it right there. But then I picked it up and now it seems to be something else. I'm thinking, uh, it's really hard to tell. But I was thinking maybe it was a, a hair clip. But it, it's pretty heavy. It does seem to have a design. So let me get it cleaned up. And uh, yeah, let's see what this is. It definitely looks to be very old. Well, check this out. That is a very nice piece. You can see where it was originally like silver gilded or plated. And uh, beautiful little flower design. Very heavy duty too. Nothing on this side, just uh, plain. I'm thinking that's where the pen went, but I just can't see any evidence of any remains of a pen. But whatever it was, it is definitely very old and very cool. And most likely an older piece of jewelry. Some kind of pen or, uh, you know, like a, a hair clip. So, very cool. I'm definitely happy to have that. It is just getting hotter and the ground seems to be getting harder. <laughs> but I got a big blaring high tone and it wasn't very deep. I took a little bit of the topsoil off and check it out, spoon bowl. Now, it's probably nothing, but I'm gonna figure I'd just grab the camera anyway and uh, see if I can pull it out of here. Well, it's stainless steel. I can't say that I've ever seen one like that. Huh. Whoa. Check this out. What the heck? I have definitely not seen one like that. It says US on it. What the heck? Well, that's darn cool right there. Let me put it down here, see if I can get in on it. That is crazy. US. Wow. I don't know part a mess kit or something it does have a back mark it says stainless on it but that is pretty crazy that it's stamped to us i like that a lot wow that's a pretty cool find so i'll have to see if i can figure out just how old that is and maybe it was part of a mess kit it's kind of a big spoon for that but very cool and very interesting yeah sometimes the treasures aren't eight inches down it's amazing what you can find on the shallow targets as well. Well, it took a lot of effort and a bit of suffering, but I ended up finding some pretty cool things out there. Now, don't go anywhere just yet. Stick around to the very end of this episode 
because I have a link there that'll take you to the very next episode of the Never Hunted Mansion series, and it's a pretty darn good one. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure. And I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America. Thank you.